Well, here we go. Um, this is new to me. I'm, I'm Bernard, Bernard McGee. I'm, I'm sure most of you know who I am and some of you will have seen an introduction already. Uh, this is rather exciting. I'm a little bit nervous um, and it's just great to see so many people tuning in and saying things. I've got uh, some, somebody in the office hoping to respond to some of you and I'll be able to look at some of the uh, comments as we go but also respond to emails etc afterwards. Just looking to have some fun, to entertain uh, and see how things go. As I say, um, I'm Bernard. I've been doing this a long time, uh, 30 odd years playing, 25 years. I've been doing it as a job, traveling around the world. Ah, he sighs. I'm sure most of you are sighing. Um, we're all stuck in our houses, I'm assuming. I'd be surprised if someone's watching it in an internet cafe or something. So let's have some fun. Uh, this first one is gonna be relatively scripted. Okay, so, um, but after that, I'm hoping that you're gonna bring ideas to the table, maybe hands, maybe thoughts. We'll be able to chat about things. There's a lot of things to chat about. Where's Bridge gonna be in three months? And where's Mr. Bridge gonna be in three months and all sorts, so we'll have plenty to go at. What are we gonna be covering today? Well, we're gonna look at a quiz. Um, in fact, a couple of quizzes, and I'm gonna choose a seminar to have a go with today. Uh, and I'll tell you why I've chosen the topic when we get there. So uh, let's go. Um, and we're, I'm going to show you the quiz that I'm hoping that a number of you have already seen. Here it is. Um, the bad news for those of you who've already seen it is I'm not going to show you the answer yet. OK, and the reason for that is because some of you may not have seen this quiz. Of course, I gave it in an introductory email. Um, so just to quickly run through it. One diamond from your partner, pass from south, and it's your bid. So it's not a difficult uh, auction, um, but it'll be interesting to see the kind of solutions we've got. There's a few coming in on the uh, things, two clubs and one heart and things like that. So we'll discuss that again later if that's all right. What I'm going to go to now is a bit of a seminar if that's all right, um, while you contemplate that quiz. So what I'm talking about today is some doubling. And why have I chosen doubling? Uh, the reason I've chosen doubling is because I was supposed to be in Devon last week. And I'm sure there's a few, a few out there that um, would have been with me in the Two Bridges Hotel, which, I, as so many hotels are, is closed now. But hopefully in the autumn or perhaps next, next spring we'll be there again. It's a wonderful place, so look out for that in the future. And what I was supposed to be doing doubling there. So we're going to have a go at doing some doubling now. So let's start off with a very simple aspect, which is what type of hand do you need for a takeout double? As I'm looking at this, I'm seeing a lot. I would say half one hearts, half two clubs so far, but I'll come back to that later. OK, so what kind of hand do you need for a takeout double? Now, usually I'm going to get responses from you, OK? But instead, I'm going to put three, my three ideas there, and that is shortage in the opponent's suit. Fundamental that, so important. You are saying, I do not want to play in the suit my opponents have bid. Opening values or extra values, as we're going to see, we're going to be looking at some doubles later in the auction. And support for all of the unbid suits. When only one suit is bid, well then of course you're going to need support for three suits. With two suits, as we'll see later in an auction, then you are going to need support for just two, and we'll see. So let's look at the classic hand, one of our favorite hands when the opponents open our short suit, okay? But the problem is, what happens when we're the opening bidder? We hate it, we hate 4441 hands there, but we love them when they open a diamond. This is a classic takeout double, a classic takeout double. Okay, and I suppose you could do it with 11 points when you're this perfect shape. With 4441, you could contemplate doing it with 11 points. Um, but we do want to feel that we've got an opening hand and that's key. So that's a nice and straightforward one when you've got that perfect shape. But today I want to talk about a few more things that are not so straightforward. One thing to mention about takeout doubles is that when we do do it, there are times we do it on all sorts of hands when we're very, very strong. So if you've got, let's say, a strong suit 
with 17, 18 points. There's no real bid to describe the hand. You're one level over, of course, well, it's, you can't do that with 17 or 18 points, surely. And a two level over call for a lot of you, I would say is gonna be, um, sorry, I'm supposed to be up there. I forgot about that. Um, a, two, <laughs> a two level over call is supposed to be a week for a lot of us and probably not as strong as 17 or more points. So I'm gonna say welcome back to you now, now that I've put my face up there next to the, the seminar screen. Okay, I knew there would be things that would go perfectly, shall we say? So, what I wanted to talk about today isn't just the basic double. I'm going to talk about more takeout doubles. And what I'm going to talk about is competing for the part score. And those of you who've seen me so many times, okay, here, I love minus 50s. And to get minus 50s, you've got to compete for the part score. And the idea is, if your opponents can make a contract, you're better off outbidding them and giving them 50. Okay, so competing for the part score. And one of the important elements of that, someone's just written, how do you still look so young? My goodness, I'm not sure I always feel it, but thank you for that. Um, if both sides have a fit, fundamental this, and it's, and it's something that I want you to keep in mind in any part score hand. If both sides have a fit, then it is always or almost always right to compete to the three level over the two level. Now, if I tell you that if one side has a fit, almost always the other side will have a fit, that means if your opponents have found a fit and they finish in two hearts, for example, one heart past two hearts, well then surely we should be bidding. And so that's what we're gonna see, okay? So the two types of double we're gonna look at, well, are gonna be this competing double, which comes at the end of an auction. So here we've got the bidding one club, pass, one heart, pass, two hearts, pass, pass. The auction's gonna finish. If you pass that, you've let them play in a fit at the two level. I do not want you to let that happen, okay? All right, so use the double here to compete for the hand and bid on. Here, your opponents have bid clubs and hearts, so I'd expect the doubler to have diamonds and spades. And most of the time, we will have a fit as well. And remember, if we go down in the contract, we get a good score, okay? Here's another one, and this is gonna be something we'll deal in the second half of this, of this little live video feed. And this is the idea of the reopening double. Okay, a lot of people find this one slightly tricky. Okay, so here you're opening the bidding. You have shown your spade suit. So by doubling, you're saying, partner, look, you know I've got spades, but how do you feel about your hand? You are playing with your partner, not just looking at your hand. And we'll look at some examples of that. So the two takeout doubles we're gonna look at today are what are called protective doubles. When you are in the last seat, and reopening doubles when you are the opening bidder. Okay, so when you are the last player to bid and when you're the opener and you have either extra strength or simply extra shape, maybe a void or singleton in their suit, and we'll see those examples in a moment. So let's start with this idea of the protective double. Okay, bidding in the last seat. So this is when your pass would finish the auction. It does have to be, that does have to have been an opening bid. So it's not when the bidding goes pass, pass, pass. That's a different situation, okay? It's when someone's opened the bidding in a suit and it comes around. So let's put some auctions up. One diamond, pass, pass, question mark. Three hearts, pass, pass, question mark. One heart, pass. Two hearts, pass, pass, question mark. Okay, so what is the question we're asking here? And I'm hoping the question is where are all the points? Why have your opponents, why have your opponents not bid to gain? Now the, the answer almost always is because they do not have the strength for gain. I will admit that sometimes 
they've just bid badly and by reopening the auction we allow them to bid again but that will not happen regularly assuming you're against competent opponents okay Alfie will be on in a future episode I promise okay I've seen some messages about Alfie then I'll, I'll mention him later so where are all of the points well I think the partner's got some now what's interesting in the auctions like this is that when one of you is in short in the opponent's suit and the other one is long only really the one who's short in their suit finds it easy to bid so let's say you've got a 4-3-3-3 three, three, three hand and 12 points your opponents open the bidding you're never going to make a bid you can't overcall and you're not liking the double because you're too balanced etc but if your partner's got a singleton you're hoping that he will borrow some of your points so let's look at that the idea of borrowing a king i'm sure we've all heard it if you if you prefer to borrow a king you could just say add three points on okay um, and what i want you to do is add three points on and if you would make a bid then make a bid okay okay so if you would make a bid then make a bid and trust me the idea is minus 50 is a good score i'm expecting them to make two hearts or two spades let's bid on and as we're going to see a lot of the time we may well make the contract i think it is about time we had a hand but just one last thing there generally the double is for takeout but as we're going to see a little bit later sometimes your partner will choose to pass the double but that will come up later. So here's a full hand. Have a little look at this one. Okay, now um, just for those of you, m at the moment we're gonna be playing a lot of Akol. So South is gonna be the opening bidder here. South is the opening bidder. Um, now, if you were playing a strong no trump, of course you'd open one no trump, but let's assume we're playing a weak no trump um, and I'm gonna open one spade with that. Okay, one spade. Okay, why am I opening a spade? Because I, I'm only going to bid one suit. I'm planning to rebid one no trump, so I bid the major. Now, West passes. West passes because he hasn't got an opening hand. Yes, he's got the perfect shape, but a double on the first round shows an opening hand. And his partner might overbid because of that. North bids two spades. So one spade, two spades. And East passes. Now South knows his partner's got six to nine points, so he passes as well. And now the auction is with West. Okay, now the auction's with West. Okay, just a quick answer to why you open one spade with the South hand there. The reason is, is you are only planning to bid one suit. Okay, so I'm going to rebid no trump, so I'm going to bid the major. You may have been taught to do something else, but s sometimes that's because people are planning to bid two suits. With a balanced hand, I want to get across my balanced nature. So it's got one spade, two spades. We're going to West now. And West has listened to the beginning of this, all, this seminar, and he's heard, my goodness, if they've got a fit, I should be competing with them. And when you've got the perfect shape, when you've got the perfect shape, double is a beautiful bid here. To persuade you to do it, I want you to borrow a king. So you've got nine points. Add three points to the nine points. That's 12. That surely is enough to compete. I know it seems odd that you didn't double one spade on the first round, but you're now doubling two spades on the second round. But it's because you know that South isn't that strong and between them they can't make a game. So you feel that East must have some strength. So you make the double and your partner bids three diamonds. Okay. And actually both contracts will make. So 110 for two spades, three diamonds would make 110. So that's a big difference. That's 220 points. And what's interesting is that if North South could actually see all the hands, they would bid on to three spades because three spades minus one is better than our three diamonds making. The difficulty for North South though is it's not always right for them to bid three spades and we'll see hands where three diamonds would have gone off. So them going off in three spades is no good. Okay, so tricky ideas, tricky ideas. Let's have a look at another one. Okay, if you're okay with that. 
Now, don't forget, um, this is recorded, so you can look at it again, pause it, etc. afterwards. So if you do want to go back to a hand later, you can look at the video again and then analyze the hands a little bit more. It's always a little bit difficult when, when a lot of the feedback is a little bit behind, so you're not able to interact. So if I'm going too fast, I apologize. So here's South and North are playing week twos. South is the opening bidder. You can see the vulnerability in the center of the screen level. So South opens two spades, a week two. West passes and North passes. What are we gonna do with the East bid? What are we gonna do with the East hand? Well, He's the perfect shape. I'm sure some of you will have bid directly over two spades with 11 points. It's borderline, but in the last seat, you're able to add three extra points. That gives you 14. That is surely enough to bid. What's interesting is both East and West have 11 points. One of them can make a classic double, whereas West is nowhere near a bid because he's long in their suit. It's the hand that is short in their suit that is the one that can make the double. An east stub is beautiful and of course west would respond to that with three clubs. Okay and once again it turns out that three clubs is a making bid so you you end up with two spades making and three clubs making and once again in theory if north south knew exactly what was going on they could go on to three spades and go one off but you can see what's happening we are creating a battlefield and that's what I want to happen on these competitive hands. Okay, so this one's a little bit more intricate. Those ones maybe you've seen before. Let's look at this one a little bit more subtle. So once again, it's south to bid. Okay, it doesn't matter what system you're playing. I hope everybody would open one diamond there. I guess there could be canapes, but let's ignore that. One diamond. West has got that classic hand I was saying to you. Four, three, three, three. I hate that shape, but it's got nothing to say. He's got nothing to say now. Now that South has bid, he doesn't want to make a double. We are not saying that double shows an opening hand, except it doesn't just show that. It says, I want to play in a suit, and West does not want to play in a suit. Okay, so it goes one diamond pass. You've got the message. North bids one heart, the lower of the two, bidding up the line in response. East passes with just nine points. And what does South do? Well, South is minimum. He's got a minimum hand, he loves hearts, he bids two hearts. Partner, I love your hearts, but I'm minimum. Okay, and at that point, of course, North is thinking, well, I'm minimum as well, so I'll pass, and that's the warning bell. East is thinking, hold on, they found a fit, but they've stopped in two hearts, why? And therefore, you're putting West with some points, and what I want you to do is throw some of those points in your hand. So this isn't an easy bid. A lot of people would pass two hearts out here. With nine points and a relatively flat hand, I can see why. But if you add three points onto your hand, imagine you've got 12 points. The opponents have bid two suits here, that's subtle. Okay, they bid diamonds and hearts, so you need support for the clubs and spades. Those, those are the only two suits you want your partner to think about, so you double. Partner, I'm prepared to bid on here because if I go off, I think it will be a good score. Okay, so you double. Your partner bids his best suit. He doesn't make up a two spade or three spade or something like that. He bids his best suit. It's clubs. He bids three clubs and that is great bidding. And this is one of my favorite types of hands. North South can make two hearts. We've bid on to three clubs. We're going to lose a couple of hearts, a couple of diamonds and a club. So we're gonna go off in three clubs. Minus 50, and I want it to be one of your favorite scores. I want it to be one of your favorite scores. So, because they can make 110, giving away 50 is better than that. Okay. But even better than that is so often you will find that North South will do what I've, just what I've said they might have done on the other hand. I think South, the bidding might go round to South and South might bid three hearts take the push as it were, bid to three hearts and find himself going off. Now, of course, he'll be thinking, oh, minus 50, that's Bernard's favorite score. The problem is he will be giving us 50 instead of taking 50 or instead of making 110. And that's one of the beautiful things about competing for a hand. You can push your opponents from a comfortable contract to a contract that's going down. 
Okay, I'm going to leave it there for a little while, if that's all right. So that is that. Um, that's the first half. And what I'm going to do now is go back to here. So, have another look at the hand. I saw a lot of answers going through. I would say the majority are what I wanted them to be, which was a choice between one hearts and two clubs. However, first, I want to deal with the other sort of bids. And what is important on hands like this is, first of all, I'm assuming you trust your partner. Okay, I'm hoping that's the case. So if you trust your partner, if you trust your partner, then if you change the suit, your partner will bid again. Is everybody happy with that? So if you trust your partner, you bid one heart or two clubs, your partner will bid again. So you do not need to jump to three no trumps. You do not need to jump to three clubs. Your part, you can say, I've got game on later. Because your partner's got to make another bid, that is when you might need to jump to three no trumps or something like that. So for me, it is a choice between two clubs and one heart. And that all depends on how many points you've got. If you've got a strong hand, what I want you to get into the habit of doing is bidding your hands as naturally as possible. Okay, so bidding your hands as naturally as possible. And what that means is you've got enough money to do whatever you want. So I think you've got two bids at least in your hand, haven't you? So let's say you bid two clubs, your partner bids two diamonds, you can bid two hearts. A responder's reverse partner, I've got a nice hand, I've got five clubs and four hearts. Or it goes one diamond, two clubs, two no trumps. Three hearts, partner, we're going for game, but just in case you want to know, I've got four hearts. Okay, when you've got the ability to bid two suits, then bid them. Uh, then bid the longest first. That's the key. Let me show you what I mean. I've, I've, I've gave, given your partner's hand up here. Okay, here's your partner's hand. Have a quick look at them before I put my ugly mug next to it and I'll take you through it. So let's look at what happens if you respond one heart. So it goes a diamond, one heart from you, one spade from east. That's all he should bid anyway. So one diamond, one heart, one spade. The problem you've got now, I think you're gonna to have to bid three no trumps. Now, three no trumps may not work out too badly, they might not lead a heart, and for anybody else in five clubs, you'll get a better score. Because of course, if they don't lead a heart against three no trumps, you may well make 11, 12, or 13 tricks. However, you can always choose to play in no trumps anyway, but if you describe your hand accurately, you can have wonderful auctions because you're strong. Now this does require partnership trust, so that does come with a warning, but let's take ourselves through the auction I've got. So it goes one diamond, two clubs, just natural and forcing, I'm gonna get another bid, and I can show my hearts later if I want to. Two spades from east. He didn't bid hearts, so he hasn't got four of them at this point, but it's also a reverse. So I think we're forcing to gain. I trust my partner, okay? So at this point, Two no trumps is a fantastic bid. I'm not saying it's an easy bid. Most Wests would have bid three no trumps here, okay? But two no trumps is a great bid because he trusts East to keep bidding, okay? And now East's bid is just a little bit better than West's bid because East bids three clubs. And these are some of my favorite auctions. If I remember rightly, Terence Weiss wasn't one in favor of actually bidding your hand completely, but East here has bid his hand beautifully, absolutely beautifully. And if we listen, we can get towards the best contract. East has bid one diamond, two spades, three clubs, five, four, and three. How many hearts has he got? How many hearts has he got? Okay. And the answer is just one, maybe even none. Now, just a quick reminder, a lot of people are saying, oh, never deny a four card major. Generally, if you've got a weak hand, when you've got a weak hand, you bid a major in front of a minor because you've only got one bid. When you've got two bids, you're strong enough to bid again, you're gonna be able to show your major if you need to later. And that will actually show a stronger type of hand. And that's important, okay? Now, getting back to this auction, three clubs is beautiful because now 
West can imagine the best contract. Partner, you've got a singleton heart. We've got a wonderful fit in clubs. I've got the gorgeous king of diamonds in your first suit. I've got the queen of spades in your second suit. And my rubbishy heart suit is opposite a singleton. Do you know, we might even make six clubs, let alone five clubs. And I'm not going to take you through. You'll notice I've got dot, dot, dot after three clubs, because I'm not going to pretend that bidding to six clubs is easy. But the only way you're going to get anywhere near six clubs is by bidding naturally. But I hope you can see if you look at the two hands, six clubs should be relatively straightforward. The only loser you're going to have is a heart. So I hope you're okay with that. Um, you know, you're all used to my bidding quiz, as I'm sure. If you're not, you'll get used to them. Um, and, uh, you know, if you get one out of two, you're usually doing pretty well. So um, I'll just say hello again full screen. Um, and then we're going to what we're going to do now is look, I'm going to put up another quiz with a warning. There is a warning here. And that is that I'm not going to answer this one today. So this will be answered on Wednesday. And this will be answered on Wednesday. Um, so let's have a look. OK, there we go. So um, relatively straightforward, I hope. Uh, again, and I'm not saying the answer is straightforward, but the actual quiz. So it's one club from your left hand opponent, mm. double from your partner, pass. One club from your left hand opponent, double from your partner, pass. And it's your response. OK, so basically it's like it's on the sort of topic we're talking about. You're responding to your partner's takeout double. Once again, I'll say there's no vulnerability on this one. So nobody vulnerable. OK, so I'll let you ponder that one. Uh, and for the for now, we're going to go back to the second part of our little seminar. Let's go. So we're talking about reopening doubles now. So reopening doubles rather than um, the protective doubles. So this is when you've opened the bidding. OK, when you've opened the bidding and it goes one spade and over call pass pass and it's your bid. OK, I didn't mean to put that up. So you didn't see that. OK, um, so the key here is your partner might have zero points. I'll put it back up. I might as well. I've already shown you. Um, so the point is, is that you've made a plan when you open one diamond. It might be you've got 18 points. You're thinking, oh, great. When my partner responds, I'm going to jump to two no trumps. That plan is based upon the fact that your partner has six points. It's based on the fact that your partner's got six points. OK, and what that means is here you can't have the same plan because your partner might have zero. And that's fundamental. So we'll see. So let's look at your three options. You can rebid no trumps, but as we're going to see, we're going to have to change the values for that, because if your partner's got zero to two points, it's not going to be great fun. OK. Double. That's what we're going to focus on today. And I need you to know about it. It's when you're short in spades and you've got support for the other suits. Double is a beautiful, flexible bid and it's going to come up and we're going to see it. And of course, you've got the natural bids. You could repeat your suit, usually with a six card suit to do that, or you could change suit. OK, naturally. So yeah. did a little bit of moving around there. Apologies for that. So let's start off with a few hands. What do you fancy with this one? One diamond, one spade. Pass, pass. OK, one diamond, one spade, pass, pass. I think you've got a pass here. It's a bit odd. I know you want to make a bid, but if you bid one no trump here, there's a couple of things that might happen. Your partner doubles. Sorry, your opponents double. Your partner will probably double with no points as well, but that's no good. If you bid a no trump, you could get doubled. Let's look at your partner's hand, for example. This is the kind of hand you might expect from him. Just three points on his, in his hand. You know, on a good day, you might make five, maybe six tricks. But on a bad day, North has the ace of diamonds. You may just make three aces and the king of hearts. OK, yes, you might not get doubled, but you might get doubled. So I think passing is best. And as you can see, they're not even in a fit. Your opponents don't have eight spades between them. So how about this one? Now here, I've increased your hand. I've given you the 18 points. The plan in any system would have been to open one diamond and rebid with a jump to two no trumps. But now I need you to take, take that plan back because your partner might have zero points. So I want you just to bid one no trump here. 
okay? Showing about 17 to 19 points. It's a strong bid. It's saying, partner, I don't need your help. I can do this myself, okay? However, if your partner couldn't find a bid with six or seven points on the first round, he needs to be thinking about game now, okay? But most of the time, he, he will have a weaker than six point hand, in which case one no trump is high enough. And as you can see, your partner's got a similar hand that I've just given you, but you, you may not make one no trump, but it's a perfectly reasonable contract. I think it's a perfectly reasonable contract, okay? Um, your partner's only got one entry, but if you play on clubs, you may be able to keep that king of hearts for long enough to make one no trump. Okay, so we're toning down those bids. With 15, 16, we'll probably think about just simply passing one spade out. With 17 to 19, we're definitely going to make a bid. One no trump. Or sometimes if you're short in spades, it's a different matter. And let's have a look at this one. This is the key here. You've opened a diamond. Notice if you're playing a strong no trump, of course, you'd have opened one no trump. But we're generally talking weak no trump here. But I'm happy to do some strong no trump if people request it. So here you've opened a diamond. It looks like a flat hand, it is a flat hand, but if you can combine your hand with your partner, then what's the best contract? Well, you don't know. But if you double and say, partner, I've got a reasonable support for any of the suits, you choose. He knows you've got five diamonds. That's fundamental. He knows you've got five diamonds, so do not worry about getting to the wrong contract. So we double. You can see your partner's hand, he bids two clubs, and we find our best fit. Beautiful, lovely bidding. And the other element, okay. Okay, as I say, he bid two clubs there. Don't get excited though, he's not showing any points with that response. Clue, clue for the first, for the quiz, but we'll come back to that. Here, of course, is a natural option. You open a diamond, you rebid two clubs. Now, you are short in spades here, but be careful, you need support for all the unbid suits, particularly hearts. Because if you double here, as you can see, I've given you a partner's hand, he will choose hearts, won't he? And that's no good at all. So with two suits, one diamond followed by two clubs, your partner can choose between two. Okay, I'm gonna look at a couple more hands. Uh, I'm conscious of the, of the time, so bear that in mind. I think I've only got 40 minutes, so, um, so we'll get on. So you open a spade with this hand, nice and natural, two hearts from your opponent's pass, pass. Okay, now this is really important, okay? So many club players will bid two spades with this hand. Okay, and don't get me wrong, it's that's you know, if you've not been taught this kind of thing, it's normal. You look at your hand, your spades are beautiful, I'm gonna bid spades. But what I want you to do is include your partner. You have bid spades, your partner can see you've bid spades, so he can go back to spades if he wants to. But double is so flexible. Double allows you to play in spades. You can go back to spades. It allows you to play in clubs. It allows you to play in diamonds. It allows you to play in no trumps. But even better, it allows you to play in hearts. Because if your partner's got good hearts, he can actually choose to pass the penalty double. Okay, and that's what's so important. So it's the perfect reopening double. So let's put that reopening double in perspective of a full hand. I'm starting to speed up now, looking at the time. Okay, one spade from west, we can see his hand. North, only five hearts, but with 14 points, surely he's got to make a bid here. I mean, most experts prefer six cards for a two level overcall, okay? But I think you've got to make a two heart bid here. East passes, west passes, and it comes back to west. Sorry, south passes, apologies. Comes back to west, and this is crucial, okay? Here, the double is for takeout. If you bid two spades, you end up in a horrible contract. The double allows you, your partner into the auction. It's beautiful. You're playing as a partnership. Enjoy it. I know some of you like to play by yourself, but enjoy playing as a partnership. I know now you're probably playing on the internet, you know, um, and feel as if you're playing by yourself. Here, East, of course, chooses diamonds as his best suit, and we find our best fit. I think probably South is gonna bid three hearts now. Um, didn't want to compete straight, uh, support straight away, but would support now. So two hearts makes both, and three diamonds makes. South bidding three hearts, of course, is a good bid from their, 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 their side, as it were, okay? Three hearts would go one off, but it would be better than letting three diamonds make. But what a difference, three diamonds to two spades. Two spades is an ugly contract, three diamonds is a lovely contract. Okay, so we've got one more hand, and it's all about this idea of doubling reaping reward, because we love 
takeout doubles. When suits are bid, we are going to use doubles for takeout. Suit, suit, double. Suit, 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 double. Doubles are for takeout, okay, in those auctions. But sometimes, what happens if we want to penalise the opponents? Well, what happens is you pass and you are relying on your partner to reopen with a double. If they've got five or six hearts, you've got five hearts, how many has your partner got? You're relying on him to make that double. However, one thing you must remember, so, so important, if you choose to pass, it is a positive choice, not a negative choice. So if you choose to pass, you're not choosing pass because, I don't know what to do, partner, I've got no points. No, we're doing it as a positive choice. Let's, let's look at the hand and see if you can see what I mean. So West and North have the same hands. West opens one spade. North bids two hearts. So West opens one spade. North bids two hearts. East wants to double, but he must casually pass. He mustn't give any idea that he wants to double for penalties. If he doubles, his partner bids, because we play doubles for takeout. So important that, okay? Of course, South passes. This is where that double is so flexible. It says, partner, let's play together. I, you know I've got good spades. I've bid them already. Let's play together. If you've got spades, please go back to spades. But here, of course, look what happens. It goes pass, pass with a smile from East, pass. Now, I understand that a lot of you with the West hand here would be going, oh no, oh no, what's my partner done? He's forgotten. He thinks, I... but trust him. As long as you trust each other, you'll be thinking, oh, this is going to be great fun. I've got a nice hand. My partner's got good hearts. We're going to take this down and have some fun. And this is why I call it the battlefield, the parts called battlefield. Okay, this is going to be some fun and not nice for North. It's unlucky. I think two hearts is a perfectly reasonable bid, but I'm afraid to say after the ace, king and spades, a spade rough, the ace, king, queen of diamonds, the ace of clubs, another rough, this and that, it's going to be three off for 500. I have suggested you can take it four off. And if you are a wonderful defender or you're playing double dummy, you can time the defense perfectly and get 800. But this is 500 on a little part score hand. These are my favorite types of hands. And if you can get used to it, if you can get used to this idea, it's a wonderful thing. OK, the double, the the um, reopening double as such a flexible bid. OK, working together. OK, that'll do uh, seminar wise today. Uh, I'm going to welcome you back. I'm going to remember to look at that camera. OK, I'm looking at the computer screen instead. Uh, let's look at that quiz that we've seen already. So um, and then we'll summary, summarize what we're doing today. Um, well, what we've done today, I should say. So one club from your left hand opponent, double from your partner, pass and it's your bid. And as I say, I'm afraid I'm not going to give you the answer to this one now. No vulnerability. I want you to think about it over the next couple of days and then we will come back to it on Wednesday. Now, don't forget, you can look at this at your heart's content later. OK, so because um, the, the video is there and you can look at it. OK, um, I hope you've had some fun. Uh, in the future, maybe the next one will be scripted as well, but, but hope for, I'm hoping to get questions from you. We're going to do, uh, have some fun. We'll talk about things. I mean, there's a lot to talk about. What's going to happen to the bridge here? Um, online bridge, how you can play, how you can have fun. For example, four of you, four friends can go online and just play at a table by themselves. You don't have to get involved, you know, those kind of things. So there'll be lots to talk about. I'm looking forward to some emails, some questions and some feedback. Thank you very much for the chat. I, I would have loved to have responded to a lot more. I see some interesting messages going by. I'm hoping you've enjoyed this and you've been entertained and I'm looking forward hopefully to seeing you on Wednesday. Please tell everybody about it. Uh, the more the merrier. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thank you.